special set of guests tonight. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves. We've got uh, Iowa. Hello, I'm Iowa. I'm a top eight player for the NA qualifiers. I also like to do uh, streaming for Twitch. And I like to write uh, meta snapshots. And long walks on the beach, moonlit nights. It's a great yes. time. And then we've got, uh, some of you may recognize him, because uh, he's still dying, but we still love him. Uh, it's a slow burn. Slow slow death. <laughs> What's up, Zenrato? How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So, uh, uh, I am Zenrato, and I got third in the Ambassador Tournament, in which I beat Spudicus in, so that's all that matters. <laughs> wow. You just... Really? You just gonna fucking let me up right there in front of God and everybody? Okay. Hey, they need to know. All right, I'll post that X clip literally <laughs> until I die. Yeah, let's post the prize money difference after that. Hey, listen. It's, I had a moral victory, and at the end of the day, it's still not as good as money. So I get it. I understand. It. So uh, just as a heads up, tonight we're gonna be talking about the Nero update, the balance updates. Um, kind of our thoughts on the game as is, uh, and then uh, Iowa actually has sort of an announcement that we're going to try to get across the community for a uh, set of community tournaments that he's heading up. So uh, starting off, uh, we'll do, I guess balances is fine. Um, let's see. Uh, they are officially instigating the mulligan rule, so it's a, I guess it's a one-shot pump and dump, right? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Um... I guess since right. you're not like doing a slide mulligan or anything, it's not as difficult. Like it's not as easy to stack your hand if you're just getting a, a fresh set. I would like to know if the cards you're recycling go back in and then you get like a full RNG set or if they're removed from the set. I would imagine it's the former as opposed to the latter, it, right? It's. Pr I assume it's going to be a, just a full, just put it back in the deck, full redraw. Yeah. I, would I think so too. But well, that's a good question. I didn't even think of that. Well, since it's... Whoa, what the hell? <laughs> Fucking Sean. <laughs> I'll have to put Do Not Disturb on. Dude blew me up. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm pretty sure since it's automated, like in uh, tabletop card games, obviously it's different because, you know, shuffling, etc. Um, in digital card games, I would assume the RNG generator, like you know, the numbers machine works differently. So I would assume the mulligan is you just put them back in the deck, draw, shuffle to shuffle, draw. Like, that makes sense. Um, that's, outside of the unit abilities and some of the hero changes, that's really the only major, that's, that's honestly probably the biggest change we've had since launch, right? Oh, yeah. yeah Probably like a mile. We have one change, <clears throat> and that was the Nergante spike launch. Yeah. So like, having all these changes to the game is just very big. Yeah, it, it's definitely significant, especially because um, people have been complaining about, um, m like, turn zero deadlocks. Like, it doesn't happen often, but, like, statistically, it's more likely with some decks than the other, like, Rezo Dante. Uh, even Uroboros can get it hit real bad if you're not careful, although I think it's mm -hmm. kind of easy to wiggle out of that. Rathalos gets it pretty bad sometimes. Yeah, well, they only run, like... Well, I guess they're about even on actions versus creatures. So. Yeah, but all their actions are their own side of the field. So, like, with Rezo Dante, oh, yeah. you can dump something on the enemy if you have to. I didn't even think Like a hook shot on the opposing side. Yeah, so it's not interactive on the Wrath side, so... Oh, man, right. that sucks. All right, let's take a look. We've got unit abilities. Uh, Revenge is... I guess this is considered a nerf. It's just going to be more expensive when they revenge is the only real difference. Yeah, so uh, normally uh, when you played a revenge creature, it died. The next time you drew it, it was halved cost rounded down. So a three would turn into a one, and a four would turn into a two, etc. Um, and now a three would turn into a two, I guess is what I would right. assume? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so that's that slows revenge down pretty significantly considering it's in all three archetypes of black, I guess. Like, it's an Uro, DD, and I guess essentially every nerd build. Yeah. Mm, yeah, for the most part. So that's a, that's a pretty big game-wide change. Mm, it also hits that 3-2 zombie 
That card yeah. is one of my favorite cards in the game. I still the haven't got the secret art for him. Oh, I'm I have about four of them. I'm, I, I, I have pulled six of the Lotus Blossom Sakuras. Uh, I have yet to get a single cop zombie, and I'm really bitter about that. I always only get two of the secrets. Both sets, I have two, and I'm missing the other two. And always the ones I want are the ones that I'm missing, of course, yeah. every time. Uh, ask me how many Charlies I have. Or excuse me, Nash. I have like five of oh him, but God. I have zero Adas. I want Adas so bad. I want the the Wesker, honestly. That's the one I really want. But that's because, you know, uh, up until now, I was going to play the hell out of Wesker, but he's getting the, the Jesus nerfed on him. Uh, news at 11, we're getting to that. So getting down to hero art changes. So uh, Wrath Awoken for Rathalos. Before it was uh, 17 AP. Uh, you all know what it does. It gives you flight and plus X attack to a friendly unit where it's... X is the number of times attack was boosted with an action card. So if you play an attack buff, it, it procs. Um, now, it's 22 AP, and you get the same thing, except that the attack boost is maxed out at 3. Um, I think that's a pretty significant nerf to it. I think it's still fringe playable, but it's definitely not the arguable 1.5 deck that it has been, or I mean, even last season, the 1. Mm -hmm. yeah i feel like if you're gonna cap it at three you didn't have to hit the mp cost that hard but i don't know <laughs> well i, I mean, mean maki maki with plus three i mean you give her one buff and a plus three she's still at what six yeah so that's 12 damage still so it's not like unplayable but it's it's a major nerf yeah it's, in terms well like in terms slower. of where it was before to where it is now well yeah. i mean wrath is capable of like a 30 second win as it exists now which is kind of crazy there's no other deck in the game that does that oh yeah wrath has the biggest swing potential like by a mile at one point i was playing a morgan player and she had me i was at two life she was at full health and i won in two seconds yep i've, I've gotten hit for 60 before like I, there's just nothing you can do about it if you can't deal with the unit it just goes but see, they also hit uh, Reckless Charge, which we'll talk about later. So, like, that aspect of it got which slowed was down. such a weird thing. Well, I kind of like it, but we'll talk about that yeah, when we get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, this, this is just a... As far as the rebalances go, this one is the one that feels the most impactful of yeah, all of them, this, in this my opinion. Yeah, this will shake up the actual yeah. meta. So, what I, it, like, Iowa, you're probably... And I say probably, and I mean very explicitly, you are the best player out of the three of us. Suck it, oh. Sam. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, what do you what do you think about like Wrath's existence current versus, I guess tomorrow? That's when it drops, right? That's when yep. it drops. Yep. Oh, yeah. Hell, so, so, does the deck like stop existing? Does it go down to like tier two point five or three? Is it still playable? I think it's a tier one this meta, but I see it going to a one point five this um, next meta. And the reason why I say that is because you guys, um, you know, hit the nail on the head, basically you know, from where it is now and then to its nerf, it is a big jump. However, um, one thing that I feel about Wrath is that <clears throat> the, the hero art, while it is very good, it can make the plays very cheesy. The best Wrathless players are going to play Wrathless very um, control tempo style, and they use the, the hero arts defensively. And even with this nerf, I can still see um, Wrathless players using the hero art defensively to give their uh, mana boost units um, a significant amount of attack, block, and then still go overhead with the flight. Yeah, so, and I don't think we've seen any um, new red cards, or in, in the case of Red Green Wrath, I don't think we've seen a, anything from either color that really boosts it yet. Although Gung Ho has not updated the card gallery yet. I, at uh, this point, I don't think we're getting any more leaks. I, I, I think that's not happening. Either. <laughs> so I, I, don't think it's I, happening. I don't see anything that pushes Wrath, but I mean, that could change. So. You, you, I think that there's a fringe chance that maybe Axel could be something. I, we'll like, talk about him later. For Wrath, but, holy but cow, I, that otherwise, weird. I don't know. Yeah, he's really weird. Um, I guess Fury. Fury is kind of good-ish. Yeah, Fury's not bad for it. It's got a low cost. I don't know. To attack just... and it, it recycles itself, so... Yeah, I, it could be worse, I guess. Um, so we've got, moving on, we've got Darkness Illusion. We've got the Rezo Morgan uh, hero ability going from 15 AP to 22. Steals just still destroys any unit inflicted with halt, so that's <coughs> fine, I, I guess. Yeah, this one was a bit weird for what was on the radar because I did not expect him to hit this 
It, they just made it more expensive. It feels like it's like three months way too late. Like unless there's yeah, something this massive a little in this little set too late. that like makes you look at Morgan Rezo and go, uh, "I'm playing that deck and that deck only." Especially with fours out. Like, Forigan is just the deck right now. There is no more consistent deck. Rezo really fell off that wagon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really wanted to see them hit Shadowblade, to be honest, because it is clearly, if I had to put it in a tier, it'd be a tier one hero art. So seeing Darkness Illusion getting hit, but not Shadowblade, it, it kind of makes me think, like, goodness, I, I really want to see Shadowblade hit, because if we're hitting Darkness Illusion, please hit Shadowblade. Yeah, it's and really strong. I think the Shadowblade issue being is that five damage is a lot of damage, period. Like, the only colors that even moderately don't care are red and green. But mm -hmm. that's not the issue. The life gain is such a huge swing in the most time. Like, black has to literally kill its own creatures to get a modicum of that. Right. So I, I would like to see Shadowblade not overheal. Like, if it, if it hits an enemy for one, she should only get one. She shouldn't get four. So it does the actual, like... It's like when you yeah. scavenger in black. You only get what the life total Right, it, it should do the amount of damage. I don't like that you can hit a one health flyer and you get six life out of it for free. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, the life gain is just ridiculous. And it makes me not want to have Drain or Lifesteal into the game. Or, um, what's that other mechanic called in Magic? It's where you gain life. Life, life link. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of the games with um, four mana purple, they they can win the games off of just timing out the match and life gain alone. So they'll be sitting at, you know, zero on the timer, 30 health. It's it's too much. Yeah. The, yeah. It's, it's sweet. I want it's... a lot of Grand Prix games that way. And this day of my nightmares only Grand Prix. People like Dex just couldn't keep up with the amount no. of time, like health Wars, recovery. Like day of nightmares only GP there's no deck that competes with four again like i was playing kind of a slow tempo controlling nerd actually iowa I, I played a really adjusted version of the deck you put up on rank star um mm -hmm. and it was let me, I'll, I'll go ahead and say this that deck was fun as fuck like it was crazy fun to play when you were actually doing something but I played morrigan 98 percent of the time so i didn't really get to interact with the deck at all i just sort of lost so <laughs> like it was definitely like and i guess we can go into the gp later um and i think set only gps is a good plan except for when there's such a huge archetype introduction like they did with fours and day of nightmares like i think that was way too strong mm -hmm. uh all right what do we have now uh dark destruction got a i guess a slight nerf like, it went from 18 to 20 AP, which is... This is the only one that makes legitimately no sense yeah, to me. Yeah, like, it, it's... 18's a lot. Like, that's an expensive hero card. Yeah, like, the, the drop from 18 to 20 on its own is, like, not super huge. But I feel like it wasn't even close to... Like, if you're gonna hit this, how do you not hit Shinku Hadoken, which is, in my opinion, a better hero art than Dark Destruction ever was anyway? Oh, strictly. But, I, I yeah, this one doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like they saw people complaining about Wesker like online or something, and they were like, "Fuck it, we're getting well, rid of Wesker." That's, that's what it feels no like, more Wesker. right? Like the Dark Destruction and the Darkness Illusion nerf specifically feel like a three month ago thing. Yes, like Ouroboros, I get, and that nerf makes sense. I don't understand what, why you would nerf Dark Destruction. It wasn't inherently like ruining anything about the game. Like, I don't know. All all the nerfs, even the Darkness Illusion one, I think makes sense. Because 15 AP is really low for a board clear. But, like, well, the start destruction one, I don't get it. Situational to an extent. I mean, I mean are, it's are not you super running, hard. To, yeah, are you running the halt cards? Yes. Are you really going to... Yeah, yeah, it's not I, super I hard to set it up. But, like, I don't understand why you touch Dark Destruction, but you don't touch Shadow Blade and you don't touch Shinku Hadoken. Both of which are better than this. Yeah, Most I mean... Definitely. Yeah, so what do you think, guy? With Dark I'm Destruction just kind of late... It's, it's just very weird because having a really good Dark Destruction Wesker player is very, um, you know, few in between because you don't see a lot of them in the, the top ladder. And then not only that, but, you know, kind of like Zenrado said, why not hit Shinku Hidoken? Red has the access to cards like um, Headshot, which has Heart Charge. And then when you play the action, 
you essentially get two more to your um, art points. So your AP that, you know, fulfills the hero art cost. Yeah, which I don't believe really any other color gets, do they? I mean, I could they be don't. wrong, uh, but re that right. Green think... gets it. Does green green gets it, but um, Is it on only a card nobody card. plays? Yeah, it's on a card that nobody plays. So red is really, you know, having the art charge mechanic even like um angry charge is another card that does it too it just doesn't make sense to hit a color that doesn't have our charge and then make it more expensive whereas you know you have ryu can use headshot to get chinko hadoken faster yeah and you you've know. got shadow blade on morgan which is just i mean that's probably the strongest hero ability in the game for cost and effect like it's just it's pure value on anything you hit yeah, 15 AP for, for that ability is kind of nuts. Yeah, that, that's And, like, they... 7 damage on Shinku, like, there's not very many units in the game that can take that. Yeah, but like... sometimes it's a bit of a waste, too. Like, some sometimes you wish it was only 5, because and they drop the AP on it a little bit, because you hit a, a 4 HP creature with 7, eight, you know, seven damage attack. It just... It's kind of swingy. Like, sure, it's dead, but I don't know. Yeah, it can be. But, like, the effective... The effectiveness of Shinku Hadoken as a point at a unit and kill it tool yeah. is really high. Well, especially so, like, because the, the Dark Destruction has thing. such a huge requirement. Like, you yeah, have with to the, hit the a five, five MP. Yeah, less, too, is like... I don't know, man. Because, like, I don't think they nerfed it to help fours out, because you generally playing this deck against fours, you just lose anyway. Unless you get real lucky and revenge out. But not really the case um all right this is this is the biggie this is my heart and i'm sorry so uroboros went from uh exactly the same 22 ap summons the highest mp unit in your graveyard does the same thing except that when now when that unit dies uh it gets exiled or removed from the game um this is a bit much i get why like the three i actually don't is... think it's that bad um I think this hits living death more than anything else. You can't cheese out with a triple Joe living death like I did <laughs> to get through the tournament. Um, because, yeah, you can't funnel Devil Joe anymore, but Mr. X is basically unchanged, so the deck is just a little bit slower, if anything. Yeah, and so what, what do you run in... Like, do you still run Joe? Like, do you try to replace it with something? Like, what do you do now? I think you just run cheaper, more revenge creatures, and you just shuffle Mr. X to your win condition. Hmm. What do you think, Iowa? I think you do that as well. One of the experiments I want to try with this is with cards being released, especially next set, you know, the Devil Awakens. Yeah. I, I know they're going to make more high-costed black unit cards that are just going to be good. And then my my goal or my experiment is going to be you know, adding those into the deck and having more of them. So when I charge up to eight mana, for example, then I play a unit and I get a, a very big swing, like um, a swing in the, the tide of the game. So I'm hoping that that one card is going to, to stop my opponent or make them, you know, burn enough time to where I can play my next card and then do it again and then eventually hit to the Erebros. So that's kind of like my game plan. Is so you're kind of looking for, hopefully, Devil's, Devil's Awaken gives you a bit more of a tempo swing. Right, right. Like an and actual more high cost of cards. Yeah. Because yeah. So like, think... with this change, it just playing hard casting <coughs> Joe is just strictly better at this point. Correct. That, yeah. That's what I want to do with Erebros. Well, we'll see. I think I think it's viable. I don't think the deck dies, but I think with the I think it's high roll nonsense is sort of over. Like the three yeah, pickle well, this, dream. Yeah, like th that's good. I think though, because Living Death had no business doing what it did in in this deck. Like it was like you called it back when we were playing. It's the oops, I just won card. Where like no matter what the board state is, if Living Death goes off and you triple Joe and the enemy gets shit, they just lose. Yeah, like, although like, it can backfire, but as long as you're paying a little bit of attention, it's not like it's not going to happen. Like it does yeah, not it, require very much setup for living death. No, it really doesn't. Like, and that's where I think it's hit the hardest here is that you can't just drop living death and cheese your way to victory anymore. Yeah, I, I think it's going to 
bump up the the actual skill ceiling for Uro a little bit, and you're going to see a lot of players drop it because it's just not the easy deck to win with anymore. Um, all right, moving on to Rathalos's, uh No one has ever used this ability ever. Uh, dive attack. Hey, no one's going to use it again anyway. <laughs> yeah! Uh, <laughs> before it was 25 AP, now it's 19. It gives all of your, all of your units to attack, I guess. I don't. Could this be played in a combo deck, or is 19 AP just too much? It's too much. Like, I feel I like, like if it. you were trying to push this ability, you would need to drop it significantly more. And then you Drop would... this to, like, 15, and we'll talk. But, yeah. like, 19? Yeah. Were you going to get it off two times in a match and get the same effect as two one-cost action cards? <laughs> like, okay, great. Stout I would rather run Stout Rathalos in chat with a every hot time. Take. Black so... is less derpy. <laughs> yeah, well, What's it up, will Stout? be. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's uh, it's very strictly different now. Black is, I don't want to call it fair, um, but I think the quote unquote cheaty face ability it had is definitely uh, gone. So dive attack exists. News at eleven, I guess. Uh, it, people aren't gonna play this. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Uh, they're not gonna play this. Yeah, this is one of those hero arts that I really wish they just give it a new ability. You know, all in all. Because there's not going to be a way that they can balance this. They just need to give it uh, a new ability. Because this gets overshadowed by, like, Charge Shot. And then when you give the buff to your board... All right, hold so on. I want, you to I want you to reflect on that. You literally sure. just said it gets, oversh it gets overshadowed by Charge Shot. Which is widely yeah. considered... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, if Charge Shot stacked, that ability would be insane. But like, you well, only to be ever fair, Dive it. Attack went from like maybe the worst hero art in the game to like bottom four. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I guess any improvements <laughs> good. Yeah, no, like Stout's got it. Like you would still play yeah. Wrath Awakens. Over there's this. no, there's, there's no, no reason you'd play this over now. Wrath maybe. Awakens. You would either have to, like Iowa said, you would have to replace it with something, give it a different kind of archetype, or you would have to add something to this ability. Like, not just attack, it would have to give something. I don't really know what, because giving it too much would really break it, and not giving it enough would put it exactly where it is, which is obscurity and unusability. I guess. Yeah, I, I, I'm with Iowa. I think you just have to remake the skill from the yeah, ground up. Uh, I agree. I don't think that goes anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Now we've got <laughs> the wildest update. <laughs> You've got Quicksilver with Dante going from... Uh, 27 AP, slow and counterbind, which means the opponent, the card, the opponent creature cannot hit you back if you hit it, uh, to all enemy units to 18 AP, and it is a one unit ability. This is surprisingly playable now, I think. It's okay. Um, I think 18 is still high. 18 is high. The effect is worse. So, so counterbind sucks. <laughs> It's not a great ability. Is not good. So that part is kind of irrelevant. It, it, this is like a really matchup dependent skill now. Because against stuff like red and black that are or even green really that have easy ways to bounce their own cards, it's like whatever. You're gonna charge up 18 AP to slow something down, and then he's just gonna savage predation it and he's gonna get seven life off it, and you're gonna waste your thing. But against someone like Morgan, who can't really bounce her units, so if she fills the board up and steal something, and then you slow her steal, and drop an Ibuki or a Senko or whatever, and just start going to town, what is she going to do? Pretty much nothing. Uh, and I think um, it's an improvement, but I don't, I don't think it... I don't I would, think it's I'm enough. I'm still going to play Double Trigger over this. I don't, I don't know why you would play this over Double Trigger in most... Like, in his standard stuff. I think there's going to be some stuff in the new set that change it a little bit. Like, uh, I have a feeling the V card is going to be kind of similar to Jester, where, like... When you get to certain growth levels, you can bring out another card. Oh, yeah, because uh, he has sort of a patch aspect to, of the to slow the lane against him. And then, of course, Jester is going to be good with it still. Slow the lane in front of Jester and just play cards. Um, but I don't think there's enough there yet. I really like that, yeah. Um, having V kind of work like Jester, I, I, I do see the synergy with Quicksilver in that. Yeah, if, it's especially if they put like a low power big ass creature in front of jester to be like all right i'm just not getting hit by this dude right 
Because mm-hmm. then you just hit them with the hit, hit them with that quicksilver, and then they just don't do anything pretty much for the rest of the game. Like that's a dead lane. It's like when Forgan steals your pre super tyrant. You're just like, all right, well, I just don't go on that lane for the rest of the game, and it's pretty much dead, right? Right. So overall, I think the the one thing before we move on Ooh. from Quicksilver that that hurts Quicksilver, in my opinion, is that Purple can already lane lock. Yeah. And it's a better lane lock than this. It's strictly. So you, you literally just drop the stealth and then you flight with a hook shot the enemy across from the stealth. And then you just let her hit you in the face while you double trigger and then your the lane is 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 locked. They can't do anything to the unit in front without using action cards. And that is strictly better than what Quicksilver can do. So I yeah, don't know. And I, I think uh stealth as an ability is very strong. I think it's very underutilized, and I'm hoping they don't really spotlight that ability because, like, in Magic, uh, Unblockable can be insanely powerful. And they've done things like that, like Hearthstone and Shadowverse and stuff like that. And usually it's on cards that aren't great, um, but it's always in conjunction with something that, you know, playtests didn't make out. Or, you know, they're like, oh, well, we didn't think about that. Like, that's always how that gets broken. Yeah. So let's start moving to the cards. Reckless Charge uh, goes from 1 MP to 3, uh, and now it gives you 2 HP. I guess that's fine. Also, the card art is still some of my It favorite. works with Charge Shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, God. It Bust Charge Shot. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not great. Um, literally, the only positive thing I could see of it is that now it's a plus one on a charge shot unit that that's it i guess that's fine i i don't think it like i think one mp was too good on it before like attack prep in a meta where decks can hit you for 12 up is a little ridiculous well this is just another card that i feel like is a little bit too little too late yeah oh because yeah. like uh, i always said wrath has kind of wrath used to be like Fuck the shit out of Maki and kill him in ten seconds, and now it's sort of a, a defensive deck. <laughs> yeah, well, where you Wrath kinda, doesn't even really run play. that many reckless charges anymore, right? Yeah, like, it I runs like one, like one or two. Yeah, yeah, like my build has one, yeah. and so losing it is like not the end of the world. Like, yeah, it's your cheese comeback card just in case you're down by twenty eight life and you want to win in one hit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like he Oops. can't do that anymore anyway. So. Losing this card isn't that big of a deal because Wrath Awoken already isn't conducive to cheesing with it anymore. So yeah, right, whatever. like you just play something else at that point. Yeah, you just play a different card. Like <laughs> whatever. Truth. All right. Words. Words from the Eye God. Um, that's really. I think that's all that you can really say about it too. Like, there's not a whole lot about it. Uh, then we got Ibuki, who went from. 3 attack, 4 HP, to 3 attack, 6 HP. She still has agility. Uh, Resonate used to be plus 1 attack, plus 2 health. Now it's just plus 2 health. I don't... I don't think she cares. I think that's still fine. A lot of people freaked out on day 1. I feel like I'm talking too much, by the way, so tell me to shut up if you want to say <laughs> something. But... Uh... Well, I think but, I think for the most part we should you should say something and then I will say something and then I'll kind of like, cycle. On it. on day one, people really freaked out about this. Even I was like, "What the I don't hell?" Think like, it's that bad. But it's not. It it it's maybe a buff. I don't I don't know if I would call it a buff, but I think she's just a better version of Devil Hunter Dante now. Ooh, that's no, that's a really good comparison. That's a like hot that. take. I didn't think like, about that. Yeah, he has built-in flight, but whatever. She gets flight or unblockable unbelievably easy, and she's borderline unkillable without, like, a black card. So, I, I don't know. You start at six. The only thing that can nuke you in a red deck is a Shinku, and you can drop her in an immediate buff like you used to have to do to get around BB Hood. Now it gets around Shinku. So, Ooh. like, there's a lot. That, yeah, like, I, this card's good. I never really <laughs> this considered really good. the comparison, but, I mean, I didn't think it was a strict nerf anyway. Like, it sucks. It just takes away an easy win button on the card, but I don't think it hurts it overall, right? Now it's just a fast tank that can either fly or be unblockable, and she basically holds down a lane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even the resonate plus one attack is not even what's lethal about her. It's the agility. Yeah. So keeping the agility is very essential. And I was actually streaming Dante earlier, Dante gameplay with the board lock, 
and all this. I played against the Ryu, and I did as much as I could, but I ended up losing my Buki by two health. And with this balance change, that two health that you get, because as you can see, they changed her stats to where she used to be four HP when she comes out. Now she's six HP. Yeah, that's this, a huge change ass on that me. card. Yeah, that change would have saved me. And I, I would have been able to take in that game. You know, on, on day one when this card came out, I, I was already saying that it was a buff. Just because it's not, it's not the, the damage is not relevant. It's just board locking. And then having that HP allows you to have the, um, the unit stay in lane more. Yeah, because you're just going to passively protect it one way or the other anyway. Like, you don't really have Even if you're buffing Senko or somebody else, you're still buffing her in the yeah. process. Mm -hmm. And I like I in the, the comments it says we increased its base HP to 6 so it would last longer against red. Okay. To, to fuck over Ryu, basically? Yeah. yeah pretty much. Because now you can't BB hood this on reaction. Like, that was the big frustrating thing as a big Rezo player, because that was my main deck for a really long time, was you would finally draw into your unit and you would throw her down, and the enemy was half a second faster getting BB Hood off, and she died immediately. And you were just like, well, I lose. And now the only thing he can do to counter that is Shinku, and there's no way he's going to get a Shinku off before you can get an action card out. So. Yeah, that's rough, yeah. man. There's one point about this card that I don't think anyone has spoken on, so I'm really uh, excited to share it with you guys, but... When World you play premiere! This... <laughs> <laughs> when you play the Sabuki card, right, and you play the uh, Resonate cards, usually because of the attack buff, they end up killing the unit in front of it, right? And that's kind of Purple's worst nightmare, because if they kill the unit in front, that means that the opponent has a new open spot that they can play a card. Oh shit, it does and... lane lock. Yeah, so pur uh, Purple wants you to be lane locked, and with only three attack, that means that your unit will not die, and I don't have to burn halts to stop your, your guy from dying. That's, wild. that's a really good point. Yeah, Especially against think someone like that. a Lupo or something like that, who, or like a Vector who just has a fat body. Mm -hmm. Like, Yeah, you just don't care about it at that point. Yeah, I want you to have units. So taking away that attack buff is essentially a, uh, a straight-up buff for that situation. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, I, I definitely yeah. have not considered that. And this is why I was a, a top 50 player. Top 5 player? Uh, top 8. Top 8? Oh, is that where top you've been? Uh, I got top 8 in the NA qualifiers. Okay. And then in Season 2, I almost had number 1 North America, but I, I threw it away on the last day. I, uh... So, I ended... I only got to play the NA tournament for, like, 2 hours. Which, at that point, I was like, why am I even bothering? Like, that's not going to be enough to get anywhere. Because it was just an MMR race, is all it was. Right. And then what was, uh, like, and then seasons, I usually, like, do the rush for champion and then play for a couple of days, and then I just stop playing champion. <laughs> I just stop playing ranked entirely. Like, I got down to, like, 7-11 last season, like, week one, and then I just mm -hmm. stopped playing, and I ended at, like, 5,000-something. <laughs> Although, if you get 7-11, you stop. Like, that's what you want, right? <laughs> That was a pretty good number. I would yeah. love to have an emblem for that. That would be that would oh, it'd be so good. So I think I agree. I think it's a buff. It, it's not a strict buff. I think it is a buff because of other factors. Like red definitely hosed that card, which it doesn't do anymore. Um, so we'll see mm -hmm. if it pans out. Uh, we have Utsusemi technique uh, MP4. <laughs> Randomly changes the target <laughs> card. of an action card. Fucking sucks. Yeah. So what is it? I don't even know, honestly, what it does now. So... so what it used to do is when you played an action card, you could play this card, and it would just randomly pick another card. And no matter what, the effect would go off. Now the effect doesn't go off if it doesn't fit the card text. So it got nerfed. It was already bad. It's a and card that doesn't worse. get played that got made worse. All right. Yeah. You got me going, ho. You did it. So, like, the enemy could do something like Brainwash, and then you could flip it with that and grab one of their units to your side. Now you can't do that. If it hits a unit on their side, it just doesn't go off because Brainwash can't do that. <laughs> or, like, uh, Spikes. Like, if they would murder a Spike something and you try to flip it onto one of their cards, if it has more than two attack, it's not going to die anymore. That's wild. 
So they took a card already nobody played, and they were like, let's just bury this. So no, it's not that... Nobody gets this. It's not that... So I will, I will actually slightly disagree. So the card is unplayable, yes. The reason they did it was mechanical. Like, they're trying to make sure that cards do exactly what they are supposed to do and not have, like, weird if-this-then-that qualifiers. Like, it's more of a back-end thing than a card nerf. They're just trying to make the, the actual programming language make sense. Which, I mean, the card doesn't matter, I get it, but I get why they did it. To an extent, but, like... I don't think it was super confusing beforehand to just figure out that once you play this card, no matter what, the effect of the card is going to go off. And that was really the only positive thing about it. Is yeah. that it was the only thing that made it have any value was like I guess that's true too. Yeah, once the card goes off, like you're nobody played this, so it was never a risk anyway. But I, the only positive I think value I got it had hit was by that, it like, like once. I, I've tried to use it before, and it just doesn't matter. It never does anything. And it can even pick the same target. So you can play it, like Rio will do a headshot, and you can drop this card, and you think, all right, now I'm going to flip his headshot back at him. And then it just hits you again. and it, So you just wasted mana on nothing. That's wild. That's very it's accurate. such a bad card. It's such a bad card. All right, you got, uh, you got some super secret tech for us, Iowa. Is there something that makes this card somewhat redeemable? Oh, I just have history with this card. So in Season 1, it works like how it does now. But around season two and season three, they actually did a, a shadow change to this card to where whenever you responded to, you know, somebody else's card, it kind of like commandeered the ability so you would gain it. So in season two or three, I, I play Brainwash and I'm stealing my opponent's unit. And then my opponent plays Utsu Semi Technique. And then what ended up happening was they stole my unit and I was pretty upset. <laughs> Because they, they took my Resonate unit off of my Brainwash, and they only had to spend two mana. Yeah, so, that's pretty rough. I mean, like I yeah. said, I think I think it's a very... It's a strict nerf to a card that only had a fringe usability before, but, uh, like, I get trying to clean up backend language. Like, you don't want card... Like, Living Death would make way more sense of a card if you only got creatures in slots that had creatures in them, right? Like, that would be a much more fair card. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they've definitely been, you know, changing this card's ability, um, you know, every season because I have a lot of different players that'll talk about it and they're like, hey, I'm testing this out. It, it changed. You know, it's doing other things now. And everybody's like, whoa, we didn't even get a, you know, a patch update for that. Yeah. Why is it doing this? All right. Let's uh, let's put some feet up. That way we can get you guys through this. Uh, so four eyes. Kind of nerfed, kind of buff. Uh, before it had one HP, now it has two. Um, it grabs a random enemy unit with three HP instead of four now. So it's got a bigger butt that I don't think matters, but I think the three HP changes this card a lot. Yeah, I agree. I think the three HP is the big thing. Um, being able to tank a Feyline for one hit doesn't matter. But like the, the three HP, it's hard to get down to three HP. Like harder than you think so many cards are even so you're going to end up on two hp or like morgan shadow blade for four is going to drop you lower than you want it to or like now you can't shadow blade an eight body and take it it's a uh, it's different i don't know i mean i don't, I, I don't think the I think health matters i no, i don't think the health matters either but and i think it's it's a strict <coughs> nerf but i don't know like Four is so consistent. I don't think. Well, the really card's matters. not going to stop getting played. Yeah, the card's still good. It, it doesn't. It's not going to like. It's not a huge deal, but it, it makes it slightly more difficult than just drop whatever the fuck you want and just take it. Yeah. <laughs> like automatically. Yeah, I agree with that. So I think one of the cards that I was thinking this card gets played a lot with is Splendid Buffet, and Splendid Buffet already scales. So when I saw the, so the nerf, I was not really you know, impressed, to be honest. No. It, it still does the same thing that it already does. And it's it's one of Forza's best card, which is, you know, taking from your opponent and then setting them back on mana advantage. Yeah, it's it's strictly value tempo. Like, there's no whiff on it. If you are yanking something off their board, it is a card you do not have to play that they did. Like, it's just... Yeah, like, and it, it, it's a hard card to rebalance because you can't touch the mana cost. Because if you change the mana cost, all of a sudden it's not a combo card with the 
the fours anymore. So you can't really hit that, or otherwise you have no tail end play after yeah. four eyes. So I, I don't know. I feel like they could have done more on this. So, Maybe, I don't know if it's mana cap, the card you could steal is the right answer. I, I don't know what the right answer is, I don't think but I don't think I don't, this was necessarily I it. I don't think this card has an answer. Like, either the archetype has to get changed specifically, or, like, honestly, like, dropping it to, a, like, either dropping it or upping it by one, like a five or a three MP cast, is probably the most fair answer we're going to get, because... It has a lot of value, even if it doesn't synergize with the rest of fours, right? I do have yeah. like a design idea for this card, though. Hit me. So what you could do is you could just increase the uh, mana cost by two, so it becomes a six cost, and then take away the condition where you need a, another four mana purple unit on board, and then just take a, a four HP or fewer unit. I think that'd be yeah, fine. Yeah, I think that'd be fine, because in, in essence, it's just a... It's a bottom end brainwash, but you get three copies of it, so it'd be. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, like that's that's the biggest issue with four eyes. Like, there's no qual. Like, you get three of them. Like, it's a it's a baby brainwash three times. Mm -hmm. So, and depending Definitely. on what you grab, like, there's a lot of value at, at four or three HP, depending on how it plays. Yeah, actually, now now I kind of feel like maybe it shouldn't be six. Maybe it should be seven because. You know, Brainwash is just such a powerful ability that no matter how you balance this card, it's just going to be very strong. Yeah. Because at four mana already, that's that's way undercosted for what she does. Yeah, she is she is absolute value. And, like, if it broke synergy with fours, I still think it would absolutely get played. Having a, having a three of creature steal in your deck is nuts. So let's get on to False Throne. It went from 1 MP to 2 MP. Yay. It's fine. Barely different. Yeah, I mean, you're still going to cast it for free 90% of the time. You're just going to play it more reactionary unless it's in your opening hand. Like, that's it, right? Yeah, now instead of basically being free always, it's free on reaction and still basically free. Like, yeah. okay. Yay. It's also better. It's better because the MP cost is now two, so you get one more AP to your Ouroboros. And it's also an even True. number. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. That's a, I, that's a super good point. That's actual value. Because mm -hmm. now so, you would definitely play it as a reaction card. Although, I don't know. Hatred Reborn makes it such... So, if you were going to Hatred, you would do what? I'm trying to think. That's what? You start at three, and then you get it for free, essentially? So you false throne Hatred, hatred in one. the combo? Uh, it's the... What's the Resurrect... The, uh, resurrect three Rebirth. mana. Oh, rebirth. Rebirth, rebirth yeah. Eight. Oh. I've always well, called it... I've always called it... Yeah, I've always called it Hatred Rebirth, and that's like the eight-cost one or whatever, and it's an awful card. I have no idea why I keep saying No, that. Hatred Reborn is good. Hatred Reborn is the cheap one that just lets you put a three-mana minion back on the board. Yeah, that's it. It's good in, like, uh... It's not as revenge. good as, as Rebirth, I don't think. No, but it's no. good in, like, Nerd. Uh, mm -hmm. so I think that's, I think that's fine. I don't really have any more comments about that one. It's, that's about as fair as you're going to get. Yeah. I agree uh, with that. Um, the legend eater, Nergigante, uh, still arguably unplayable. I don't see why you would play it. So <laughs> I it mean, costs, it, before it cost seven, had zero attack, one HP. Now it costs six, zero attack, one HP has veil. Uh, before it removes 10 cards from your deck and it gains 510, now it removes 10 cards from your deck and gains 410? Like, hmm? Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, having Veil on a fat body is obviously really good. Yeah, I just don't see how that's possibly so worth a So many matchups deck. come down to, I have two more cards than you, <laughs> right? Yeah, like, I, I don't see how you could possibly make it worth a third of your deck. No. All right, Iowa, now you're going to blow this open and tell us we're both wrong. Go for it. No, no. You guys <laughs> so there's an epic, uh, you know, dragon, uh, Zeno. Um, Zeno the Jiva, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. the 2 8 flyer with Veil. And already that's, that's like, just better than this. He's a strictly uh, better card, yeah. Yeah. There's and, a better card that's that we're going to talk about when we talk about the new cards that Green is getting, too. That yeah, literally the, new, the new guys are pretty rough. better than this in every way. So that is, uh, those are the balance changes. So hero arts, um, the mulligan rule, I think, is the most important thing out of all of this, other than Wrath getting nerfed into the ground and Uroboros being a little more fair. 
Um, I think the mulligan rule is going to change how a lot of games go because hand as a big Rezo player, very happy about the mulligan rule. Yeah, well, I think it's good. For Two everybody. chances to open an Ibuki. Because like, sure, having resonate open into their best hand is the worst possible thing that you could do to them. But having an unplayable turn zero is also pretty shitty, right? Like, I feel like that's just yeah. They, I, I think part of this is just because like they literally had to write a rule into tournaments that says yeah. if you get hand locks we restart the match so yeah. part of it i feel like it's just all right we gotta we can't keep having hand locks in our tournaments yeah it, it's it's definitely not great from like a spectator standpoint so we'll get to the devil's awaken so pretty sick art i like all of the updates and that's the one thing i do want to say about teppen like the art design for everything is top notch like everything looks insanely good right oh yeah absolutely I love, I, I mean, I love basically all the art this entire game, but yeah. I do, I mean, I'm a big Devil May Cry fan, so obviously this set is hitting for me in just about every way. Yeah, Devil May Cry 5 was definitely, like, the sleeper game of the year option at the beginning of the year. Like, it was an insanely good beat-em-up. Uh, and honestly, I would argue that outside of 2, it is probably the best Devil May Cry. Or not two, three, excuse me. I was about to say, uh, that was two a was very good. controversial hot take. You yeah, I was like, oh, I'm going to drop it on him. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I, I think you could argue it's better than three, but I mean, that's not why we're here. I, I could yeah, do this all night. We could, we could definitely go into that. So, <laughs> I could fight uh, that all night. New art for everybody. The cinematic trailer with the uh, operatic Devil Trigger background music was a very interesting choice. I liked it, but it was wild. It, it threw me for a loop the first time I heard it, but I like it now. <laughs> yeah, like it, it definitely takes a second to sort of get used to, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. I enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. When I was just listening to it, I just like new things, so. Yeah, it was definitely, I like, I, and I'm kind of curious, to, I'm pretty sure Capcom did this in-house, because I don't think Gung-Ho would have had the resources, but I also could just be, you know, sticking my thumb in my ass on that one. Gung-Ho may have the resources, and I'm unaware. They did make Puzzles and Dragons, and the last time I checked, that game made a couple billion dollars. Made, made a little bit of money, yeah, yeah so last it, I heard. Yeah, so I don't know, I, I don't know from a developer standpoint where that would go, because... Um, Capcom is usually very protective over their IP, so they may be in head of design. Uh, but I don't know. I would have to ask, and I, I won't get I doubt answer. they would answer yeah, that question that's, anyway. That's, well, yeah, that's, so. that's an internal thing. Uh, so we got all the achievements. So we get three packs and 50 zenny, which is fucking dumb. 50 shit. whole zenny, wow. <laughs> may as well adjust. Really, the... They really got to work on the logistics of the uh, upgrades. Yeah, like the we're going to talk about that yeah. one a lot. I, I think that's, uh, that's the economy thing. So I, it's, I guess it's better than, you know, having somebody come out of my phone and poke me in the eye, I guess. Uh, so we got Hero. We got Nero. Hero of the day. Pretty good update on the art. Um, I mean, it's pretty standard. So he's got uh, three hero arts, Devil Breaker, True Power, and Hey Nico. Uh, I guess I'll play him since they're Oh, that's loud. Calm down. Uh, so first AP is Devil Breaker is 15. So for one attack, a creature gets three attack and spillover. That's fine. I don't think it's great, but it's fine. For 15 AP, it's it could be strictly worse. I think all three are good. Uh, I, I think Devil Breaker... Double Breaker was the one when it first launched that I was like, this kind of sucks. But the more I look at it, I think it's actually pretty good. Because you drop it on the very the same way that you do. Powerful. People don't respect Spillover because like the cards from Day and Nightmare where Spillover aren't great except for what, Tigrex? For me, it's not even the Spillover so much as it is the one attack thing is kind of like deceptive. Because the same way that Nerg plays Spike Dive Bomb is that you play this when your card is about to get hit. Yeah, you play it defensively. So they, yeah, so they keep the three, and then they hit with the additional three plus spillover. So you're really getting a bonus six damage out of this. Yeah, it's pretty good. I also think this is a really, really easy way to finally make victory halfway decent. Because <laughs> really victory cool. blows. Yeah, and that's this, fair. this helps victory, I think. It makes it easier to win and get your actual victory buffs quickly. Because half the time with victory, all green cards attack sucks. So your victory guy is at like two health by the time he wins. This actually makes it like at least playable. That's fair. I hadn't actually thought about that. What do you think, Iowa? Yeah. It's good? Yeah, it's good. So we've got true power increases the level of a friendly unit with growth, which is the new level up mechanic by one. Uh, it is 12 AP, which I think 
think is the lowest AP in the game, right? Tied with Metsu Shoryuken. True. Is that an actual ability? I'm kidding. It's yeah. Ryu's <laughs> unplayed ability. Yes, I was, I was joking. <laughs> I, I can't see. I can't even tell because literally one person ever has played that card, and it's Stout yeah. in the chat right now. Oh no! So, Are you calling Stout out? Oh my god! I'm calling Stout out. He made a video about Metsu Shoryuken. Oh, oh, rough voice. Um, I, it, it's really straightforward. There's not really a whole lot to it. So unless growth is really strictly better than anything else, I, it's fair. I don't. I don't know. I don't really yeah, know catch me uh, Ouroboros and reviving uh, Dalimeter and then using that and board wiping. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about that. That's kind of living the dream, though. I don't know. I think it's pretty good. Like, uh, I think green purple is going to be pretty good with this. That new Dante that gets yeah, the combo and all that stuff. Very good. Yeah. I, th I think <sighs> growth is going to be good. It's, it's going to be better than Explorer for damn sure. Oof. I think there's going to be something very crazy and wild that we can do with this card because there was one of the, the new card spoilers, but I'll, I'll probably save that for later. But yeah, I, I do think growth is going to have abilities that when you trigger them, they're going to be just very strong. So I can see true power being, you know, playable. Yeah, I mean, it all depends on the ability, right? Like, it depends on how, what cards get put out ultimately that are, have value or are playable. Because, like, they're, they're actually good explore effects, they're just not on cards you would play, which... Sucks, yeah. You know? Um, so hey Nico is the third one. So uh it is seventeen AP. Uh you get almost hit by a wagon. Uh so you either get uh Gerbera, Ragtime, or Tomboy. Uh so if I remember correct, uh Gerbera is one cost, deals twelve damage. This is the Inferno, right? Yeah. It's uh it's spike launch basically. Yeah, it's twelve damage split among all enemy units for one. And, and this is a 17 AP investment, I guess. Like, it's fine. Uh, is right. that right? Yeah. 17 AP. Yeah, it's fine. Like, 12 damage among enemy units, like, unless you're playing, like, big-ass red or big-ass green. Like, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I think every card that you get from this is pretty good. I don't think this is my favorite one, but I think every card you get is good. Yeah, I really wanted, you know, green to have a way to... Uh, manage the enemy units because that was one thing that all of the the green hero arts didn't have was a way to manage your opponent's units yeah whereas like, it has no removal that, yeah exactly so i i love this hero art so i think yeah it's it's pretty decent so ragtime is inflict halt on all enemy units for 13 seconds for two that can be absolutely game ending depending on how green goes right this one is temptation yeah which apparently, according to Gung Ho people, was intentional to give uh, green some of the OP shit that the other colors had, because green sucked. <laughs> That's true. Well, they did a pretty good job with Nero, I think. Yeah, I think yeah, Nero I, was definitely I think kind Nero's of was really good. Uh, and then Tomboy, which is randomly increases the attack and HP of a friendly unit by a total of 10 points. Mechanically, this is what that means. 10 points gets divided and divvied up between attack and HP in any combination of 10. So it could literally go 9 attack, 1 HP, 9 HP, 1 attack, etc. Right? Yep. So mm -hmm. that's going to be fucking wild. <laughs> right? Like. Yeah, that. I mean, I think it's really good, but it's definitely going to be one of those things where it's like, what... Uh... How, how am I going to get screwed by my own deck today? Like you've, you've got an Iris sitting on like... 10 attack 7 hp and you're like all right we're i'll ride this one to the end of the world pretty much yeah i mean that's about it um i i think it's good i don't think there's a there's no way you can drop 10 stats on something and not get some benefit out of it like yeah and like obviously dies to doom blade is an argument like everything dies to insta kill yes you are correct like i get it but i think on paper this is pretty good like yeah. like uh like Zen said and, and Iowa can kinda of co sign. I don't I don't think there's a bad option from Hey Nico. There isn't no. So Because no. I could see myself putting that card onto uh, Heavenly Kicks Chun oh. or Kushala. Oh just, no, uh, I hadn't even considered uh, that. Kushala Deora with that is just disgusting. <laughs> That's disrespectful. I'm calling the cops. 
<laughs> so we've got uh, the two new abilities are growth and anti-air. So for those of you familiar with magic, it's just reach and growth is just level up. Um, so you have growth that has a qualifier. Uh, you get growth points from, it seems like playing other cards uh, that have growth bonuses on them. Uh, and you gain certain things. You get it from playing. It, they don't. The cards that you play don't have to have growth also to trigger. It's any AP that you spend on a minion. Oh wow! What? So like growth three means you need to play three uh, MP of minions on your board to trigger growth one time. That seems too fast. It, right? it, it, in a lot of cases, I think it it could be. Um, but also, you have to fill up your board slots to use it. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm playing green. Well, yeah. You said the I, same I, thing I, twice, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> yeah, but, like, I, I don't know that it's... I don't know, we'll have to see some more growth cards, because there are some growths that I'm not impressed with, and there's some that I'm crazy impressed with, so... Yeah, so I, I guess know. that's fair. So let's go to the card previews. Um, they don't have all of the cards out yet. I'll, I expect I'll, that they will not release any more previews yeah. because the set is tomorrow. So yeah, I'll, I hope you I'll, like what you got. I'll leave commentary everybody. out to the side, but uh, <laughs> whoever's in charge of that could like, if magic had a bad spoiler season, people would set shit on fire. <laughs> That's so true. Like, like gung ho is real good about it normally, but like, like if Ma so like spoiler seasons for magic sets usually start about three to four weeks before the set releases in full, and like if you suddenly didn't get it, and they've made an event out of it, like it's spoiler season is a legit thing. Like they do it on Twitch, they do it on uh, Twitter, like everybody gets to do it. And uh, if they day before a set drop released all the cards, people would fucking riot. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. Day of Nightmares was so organized too, and so yeah. clean, and you got well, everything right literally. away and quick. And I and... think this is the thing, and, and we we had a very minor discussion about it. I think it's a departmental issue. I think one team may not necessarily be controlling all of it. I think it is a multi-team thing. Um, and yeah, and like you said, Capcom is very protective of their stuff, yeah. so maybe they, there was some conditions that weren't being met for releasing new art or something. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's I, very confusing, but after Day of Nightmares, it was definitely disappointing to see this spoiler season pretty much fall apart. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, so Impusa Queen, 5 drop, 2, 7, growth 3. Uh, level 2 deals 2 damage to enemy hero. It's a it's a shock. That's fine. Like That's not bad. Level 3, it gains 2, 2, so it goes to a 4, 9? Which it won't be by the time it hits level 3, right? Like, unless you buff well, it. Well, it, it would take 6 mana worth of minion play, so probably not. Yeah, like, unless you just drop a 6-drop after it. Which, which you, yeah, yeah, you'd have to save up to 10. Which, I mean, it's, if you're playing it in Ryu, I guess you could do that pretty easily. Yeah. So, card's fine. I don't. I, I think it's got a big butt on it, so that's fine. You got anything, Iowa? <clears throat> I think it's um, very cool for a, a unit. I think it's um, cost-adjusted correctly. So, by the time it gets to level 3, I get to ping... A unit and then it has four nine stats for for five mana essentially it's just really free it just takes time to scale yeah that's fair which i you it should it, it needs to be said it should take time to scale yeah. that was one of the big problems with wrath of woken is it's like oh by the way i just get to drop a trillion things well, whenever I, I want i don't necessarily think that was the issue with wrath of woken i think it was the nature of the red green deck being everything in this deck costs one or two right like i think that was the biggest reason that people were like oh Shit. I don't know. I think if you left it with the same AP that it has now, but you hit that hard limit of three, it would it would be very different still. Yeah. Um, we've got my boy, Chill Penguin, old OG Mega Man X. He's an epic. Four Fucking mana. love Chill Penguin. Uh, he's, so he's happy. My dude! Uh, four mana, or four energy. Excuse me. I'm using the wrong words. Don't yell at me. MP. MP. Four MP. Don't hate me. Get your uh, shit together. Right. Uh, growth 3, he has 4 levels, so gain shield, gain shield, deal 6 to a random enemy unit. I don't think... Like, he's costed, right? Like, I, I, he's good. I, I don't think he's particularly game-changing. He's um, alright. Yeah, he's fine. I like that he dodges, um, you know, 4 eyes when the change happens. Yeah. That's actually not bad, because you would be able to pop a level on it pretty much with every creature in your deck. And then some. Mm -hmm. That's not too bad. Yeah. 
really surprised that they put him as a, a red card. But I do see, you know, the theme of making Chill Penguin red and then giving him the level four ability is really nice. I, I could see myself playing him. I just yeah, don't know if I, I, would... I think he's playable. I think we just need a little more to see where red sort of shakes out, right? Right. Yeah, yeah I don't think I don't. Yeah, I don't think he's bad at all. We have. Uh, he's King... not super difficult to to get gross into no, no, either. No, no, not at all. Like, uh, like, sure, it's a more creature centric red, which a lot of people aren't used to, but it's still it's playable. Um, you've got King Cerberus, 6 MP, 2-8, uh, uh, Growth 2. So this is the one that I think may end up seeing a singleton or a double played. Um, first level gain spillover. Second level inflicts halt on a random enemy unit for 13 seconds. Level 4 deals 4 damage to all enemy units. So depending on what deck you're playing, this is a pseudo board wipe if you just slam down 2 MP, 2 creatures that cost 2 MP one after the other, right? Basically. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's pretty straightforward. I think he'll see play. I think six is a lot in red. Um, especially when, like, your your big cards are, like, what? Still Ryu and and Wrath, right? Mm, I don't know how much Wrath is going to see play anymore, but Ryu for sure. Yeah, so, I don't know. I think he's fine. I don't know if I'd run him as a threesome, <laughs> but, like, he's good as a singleton. Like, that level 3 into level 4 could be really brutalizing. Well, it's like we were talking about with Chill Penguin just a second ago. Is it's more creature-centric than you expect red to be nowadays. Yeah. So we got to see what comes out. Because if red ends up shifting to be a more creature-heavy build, he's going to be really good. Yeah. No, but I, we got to see where fine. it goes. Uh, is this my boy? This is... Woof. Uh, <laughs> it's Axel. Torchbearer Axel. Everybody knows this dude. He's a 1-8 a for 3. Growth 3, level 2, he turns into the unit in front of it. Uh, he activates the when-played ability of that unit, so it acts as though you just played it. I, um, as a singleton, like a legendary, I don't. Yeah, what I'm not really feeling do? Axel. It, weird fucking card. Weird card. Like, I always like, I mean, I like it because, like, me and Zen are generally on the same page. We're like, okay, I see the fringe benefits of this card, but, like, what does it actually do? And then I was just going to come out of the left wing and be like, you're wrong. <laughs> I don't know if I'm like that. But yeah, this <laughs> card is really good um, reactively because you can pair it with a, another card in hand. I like that it's very cheap in the mana cost. So you just kind of hold your mana. Your opponent plays a really uh, strong unit. So let's say they play a Buki, and then you play this in front, and then you play another minion. And then all of a sudden, your your axle becomes the buki and co copies the resonate stat. So here's my, and this is this is a really weird sort of windmill conversation. What if the deck mm -hmm. is more creature centric because red just has more value on creatures? Like, well, I actually it, wanted to bring that up. Right? I don't know if he's going to copy the stats because the green card that duplicates units does not. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I meant not the um the stats of the the attack and health. I meant you just mean the nice. resonate buff. Well, I don't know yeah, if it. Resonate. I don't yeah. know if it qualifies though, because it just says. Well, no, I guess it says turns into the unit in front. It just activates the when played ability. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. I, it I think it's literally just he. It, it literally just turns into the thing in front of him, which is good. I mean, it. It's fine. I think it has uses. I don't know that he'll get played in like every deck or anything. He's well, no I mean, fate defying Ryu, but. No, I mean, and he's a, he's, he's, a he's one good. of. So I guess. Depending on how it goes, I think he's playable. I think he I reminds me of somebody like Hunk that like looks really weird at first, and then you're gonna be like, oh, actually, this is pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really good point. It <laughs> really is. Uh, all right, full potential three drop deals two damage to an enemy unit. If a friendly unit on the field has reached maximum growth, deals seven damage. I don't, I don't think that's gonna qualify very often. Like unless like growth really has a lot of breakout in red which i mean it could we're gonna play it just for the art baby oh yeah no that is some that sick artist ass art like you got a shinku so going into a nergigante about to like windmill slam on ryu yeah i'll play the shit out of that card for the art i don't know what do you think hmm. Iowa? like the damage is good like it's a mini hadouken yeah <clears throat> it's not that great because you know, it's very situational. You would have to play a deck that consistently gets growth under red. And you don't want to then, play actions in that situation anyway. Yeah, one thing I will say about this card is the, the crossover art. We don't have a lot of that in Teppin. No. So M Monster Hunter and, you know, Street Fighter, that, that's pretty sick. This is only the second crossover card, right? Um, yes. I believe After so. After Buffet? Yeah. yeah. Yes. 
and like you can see like the nerve spikes in the background like on the, this is this is the example of like these people are knocking it out of the park when it comes to yeah like the, the art like this is where i want tepin to go because yeah. as much as i love seeing stuff like chill penguin and really good art I want to get to the point where it really embraces that it's a Capcom crossover game. Yeah, like it needs to sort of take itself a little more and less seriously considering it is a crossover game, right? Yeah, I agree with you. Um, you've got Fury. Uh, gives two attack and death puts a Fury card in the EX pocket to friendly units. So essentially it cycles itself on a creature death, which is fine? I, I think it would be a lot better if it just cycled itself, but... Well, I mean, most cards would be, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know if... I guess it's okay, because Wrath, as he is, doesn't really heavily use the EX Pocket, so yeah, you might as well get something out of it. It's okay. I'm more concerned about that it costs three mana for a, and another effect that you could get cheaper. But Yeah, I mean, it does exist in a realm where other cards do the same thing better. But, I mean, that's a lot of tapping right now, too. Yeah, but, I mean, also, you're playing Wrath, maybe you just don't ever want to be in a position where you don't have a buff, so maybe you yeah. play this card, I don't know. What do you got, Iowa? Well, what I like about it is you can always initiate the action phase, so you get the two mana buff. So a, a really good example would be, you know, you play the the mana battery units, the MP boosters, and then you have this ability um, in your hand, and then you also have a beast cannon. So let's just say for, you know, best case scenario, your opponent plays an action, then you get to play this for one mana, and then all of a sudden you have a an action that will repeatedly come back as long as your unit dies. And then, you know... Worst case uh, scenario, you have a Beast Cannon in hand. You play the Beast Cannon, and then your opponent responds with an action. Then you get to play Fury, and then essentially only spend one mana for Fury, and then get you know plus four damage. What yeah, I like I about think, this card, I think reactionary would be very useful. Yeah, I just like that it, it helps curve out the the actions for for Rathalos, and then it can also be used to to help you have more units instead of actions. Yeah, because so since, since it always gives you one, like, essentially, you don't have to play as many of them. So, it's kind of like... Yeah, um, the problem, it, it can only cycle twice, though, so, I mean, there's going to be some limit on what you can do with that. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless it doesn't work like Lightning Bolt, and it just duplicates itself, which would be crazy, but... It might. I mean, it gives, uh, it gives I, a, I the unit that it works like effect. Lightning Bolt, though. Well, I don't know. It gives the unit an effect, and usually that's different from straight damage, but we'll see. Uh, we've got uh, Nidhogg, Three drop, one six combo off the rip. He's got combos at one six on a three drop. That's kind of aggressive. Uh, he's Maki. A, yeah, he's a five growth though. So uh, level two gains two HP. Level three gains two attack. That's fair. He's fine. Boy, too slow. Yeah, he just he doesn't he just doesn't do enough. You can combo with Eva, I guess, but like, boy, too slow. Yeah, like the five growth really sort of slows him. Like I would say three or four would have been a bit better for him, but I guess. People are, I guess they should be a little more wary of combo anyway, because they've let that dog out a couple of times. Yep. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, what is next? Ava, three drop, two four. Uh, epic. Uh, when played, gives plus two growth points to a random friendly unit with growth. It's five. Yeah, so she's basically five growth for only three, which is not bad. Yeah, I mean... It's okay. I don't know. Like I said, without seeing the entire card art or the entire card gallery, I I don't know. It could be played. Yeah, growth is a tough thing to talk about with so few leaks or like spoilers or whatever because we don't know yeah. yet where, if growth is really going to be that crazy or not. Yeah, but the, it's, the, it's strict, solid. the strict known unknowns are very bizarre in this. Yeah, like a big right? thing for Ava is going to be if growth overflows. Like if you hit your growth cap, do you keep the overflow or do you level up and stop right away? Because if you keep the overflow, right this is, if if you keep the overflow, Ava's really good. If you yeah. don't, I don't know. Hmm, that's a good point. I don't know. I guess we'll see how it plays. We've got God Car Machine O Innery. Yeah, he's really good. I really like him. This is such a he, he's the boss card. monster that Green has been needing really bad for a really long time. Yeah, and you can play three of them, so it's fine. So he's seven MP three nine. He's got heavy pierce and veil. That's like he's buffable. He gets around stuff. I think he's fine. I think he's good. I mean, a nine body with veil is just going to be hard to deal with, regardless. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's going to be an essential, you know, card for for Nero's third hero art, K Nico. If yeah. you could, 
use the um all all of his cards that he pulls from that hero art are useful um with a guard karma machine because with heavy pierce you're always going to be pushing in damage so you can either buff him with tomboy give him ridiculous stats and he has veil so you can't interact with him or you can halt the enemy um side while you're you're charging mana or you can deal 12 to the enemy's board as well so yeah. he just has a lot of synergy with nero it gets a little Heavy Pierce there, but... is just so good on its own. Well, Heavy Pierce Having also it has the issue hit. of it's not on a good unit yet, but this really changes that. Well, Heavy Pierce wasn't on a unit at all prior to this. Was it not? I thought but it was on one it was of the Only wow. Chun. Only Chun yeah. had it, yeah. You know? That's crazy. So yeah, that's definitely a, a departure from design. Like they definitely haven't done that before. So I, this is, I would say, this is a card to pay attention to. Like, if you plan on, playing he, he's one of my favorite cards out of the leaks for sure. Really good card. Like it's, it's pretty good. Um, Awaken to power, one drop gives five growth points to a friendly unit with growth. It depends on if growth stacks. Like that's the thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If growth overflows, this card is so good. Yeah. Like reactionary, you just make something larger on creatures that like have a stop or a nuke or something. There, I, I think it's fine. It just depends on if it overflows or not. I agree with that. Uh, wind armor two, my boy Koosh. Uh, grants reduces damage taken to three or less to one to a friendly unit. If the unit has growth, it gives a one one. It's, I guess that's fine. It's all right. Like you put him on a, you put him on a giant ad. Like you could put him on God Car Machine. You yeah. don't even need the one one for it. It's just how are you going to get through nine damage? Well, it's nice too. I, I don't know if putting, I guess because Kushala, this is just his gimmick, but uh, my biggest complaint about Kushala was always that, yeah, that thing is great, but he's murderous spikes bait. He's always in spikes range. Yeah. So I feel like that 1-1 one, one was an intentional nod of like, hey, now you can buff somebody and he's not as shitty when you're having this really good ability. Huh. Um, that's all I got. I, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. It's not great. It's pretty good. Yeah, there's already a card that gives the, um, you know, change three damage to one kind of deal. It's in Day of Nightmares. It's called Besieged, and it only costs one mana. So, yeah, it's essentially this is just the same thing with growth tacked onto it, right? Yeah, well, if, if a, you get a plus one, plus one, which isn't yeah, the worst thing in the world. It's okay. And it's a free reaction, so, like, I can't hate on it, but it, it could be better. So we're getting into some awesome Mega Man X art with this. Oh, yeah, the art's 17th crazy elite good. unit is so good uh so five drop epic uh, action card gives all friendly units one two also grants victory one two to friendly units with growth i don't know how good that'll be but that seems okay like if you're gonna be a creature based deck and you want to fill the board with growth units this could be a significantly worse card right yeah it's a little expensive but i like that that they took the idea they had with the original one of like they have nightmares change where they wanted to do the let's do boards like board swarm cards let's do ascension and all that stuff uh and they took out the requirement to have your board filled so you can't really like hard counter this card like you can the other ones where if you just kill one of the units all of a sudden it doesn't go off anymore yeah. you're still going to get value out of this no matter what it, it's a little expensive for my taste but I think if growth ends up having the value that we suspect it does, like it, it's playable. Maybe not as a three of, but definitely as a one or a two. Oh. Yeah, I didn't even notice about the the second bit where it requires the unit to have growth to give a victory. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think right. honestly that makes the card fair, but it also makes it an archetype card. So I don't know. Correct. We'll we'll see how it goes. I'm just hesitant to drop five mana on just a buff that's not yeah. going to be that game i don't i say it's not going to be that game changing but i don't know maybe it could be yeah i mean Pete, we've I, been wrong so. before there's yeah, not yeah <laughs> like we don't it's have the whole me. and and this is kind of the thing we're going to hammer a lot like we don't have the gallery in front of us we don't know all the cards like this, this could have synergy that we are just unaware of uh my purple boy catch a watcha uh, 3 MP, 2 5, growth 3, level 2 gains flight, level 3 inflicts halt on a random unit for 13 seconds. For a 3 drop, he's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think he's pretty good. Yeah. Like, I think 3 is such a, I so far, 3 looks like a, such a pivotal growth number. I think him being a common is really strong on it because, like, any higher and he would not be as good, I would imagine. And if you put him in 4. Like, then he's just played in fours, right? Right. 
So I think three's fine. And having him at common means everybody can get him, and he's a pretty good card. I think for, like, if you were going to be like, hey, I don't have a whole lot of souls, but I want to play three, like, he's got some decent value that you can actually build. Yeah, I think that uh, the hold on th for 13 seconds for six mana is really good. That's a lot. Hold for 13. Yeah, 13 is a full attack cycle plus a little bit of extra. Um, and halt, we all know that halt is ridiculous on its own. Yeah. Uh, but like I said uh, earlier, three feels like it's going to be really the pivotal number for growth. A lot of cards have growth three. So you can drop him to get a growth. You can funnel a growth into him, and he's got flight now. He's solid, I think. Yeah, I think he's fine. I think he has a, I think he has a lot of undersold value. I think people uh, – I haven't really been paying attention to what people think of the cards, um, but I think he, if he's not higher <coughs> up on people's watch list, he should be. Um, Hell Antonora, 4 MP, 2 5. When he takes damage, he deals the equivalent of his own attack to a random enemy unit. Good as shit. He's real good. He's really good defensively, and I guess if you can buff him, he's just strictly better. I like that you can play him with Heart Tank or Anti Body Jill, but even if you play him in fours, he works well with Bertha. Oh, yeah, he does. I didn't even consider that. That's kind of wild. So, yeah, he's, he's a rare, so he's a little more expensive, but very playable. Like, I, at 4 or 2 5 is good. Just the, the defensive reaction is fine. I guess the only thing that really sucks is if you're playing against a deck that only plays one or two creatures. So, like, you play him in a lane, and then you just ignore him. Yeah, but if you're playing him in a deck like 4s, it's hard. You can't really ignore yeah, the board that's forever true. again. <laughs> that's, you know? That's true, too. Like, you can't realistically just ignore the board if they're going to drop him... Lupo and Vector or something, you know, you gotta yeah. you gotta make plays That's at fair. some point. Uh, we've got, I think this is the sleeper. I think this is the chase epic of this one. So you've got the five drop Dante. He's a one seven. Uh, growth three. Level two gains combo. Level three gains three four. So essentially, he's a four eleven. So he's good. Like I don't know if he'll be a three of in a lot of decks, but I would definitely play him. Like he's, I think he's good, yeah. With Nero's second skill, I feel like he's going to be really good. Yeah, like I think he's With a green high. purple with some emphasis on the mana ramp, it's not hard to get back up to three when you have an Iris already on the board. Yeah, that's true. Drop Dante, flip it into a Feyline, then Nero's skill too. Oh shit, he's a 411 with combo. Yeah, that's, that's really good. I like that, yeah. Yeah, I think he synergizes with I think he synergizes with more <laughs> with more hybrid decks than a mono purple too. Yeah, I wouldn't play him in a strictly purple deck. No, and I honestly, think that mono purple is going to be relatively unchanged based on what we've seen at least yeah, so far. Like I said, and that could change, and I hate saying that over and over again, but that's just how it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving into Amatsu, uh, a little throwback here. Uh, eight drop, two eight flight. When he attacks, it inflicts halt on a random enemy unit. It's got resonate, deal five damage to all units with halt. I, I guess that's fine. He's all right. He's like, a little expensive. He's very but his expensive. effects are undoubtedly really good. They're very so. strong. But for eight, like you would hope that if you're playing paying eight for something, he's useful. Because I mean, we have plenty of seven, eight, and nine drops that you play, and you go, oh yeah, he's a vanilla three eight with flying. <laughs> <laughs> good old uh, Credo. Like, Angelo Credo, 9 mana, 310 with flight. That's all he is. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, he's fine. I don't... Like, we could all be proven wrong and he ends up being, like, a really sl big sleeper hit, but he, he's okay. I, I, like, I would not be surprised if he ends up being very played, and I would also not be surprised if he ends up just being a garbage fire. Watch, uh... Gung Ho Big Brain does. This is why they nerfed Darkness Illusion, because this guy's gonna end up being super good. Yeah, right. We, well, that's a good point. We thought forward this time. Uh, so let's see. Souls return, eight drop, return all units to their respective decks. Um, I mean, this could swing a game very, very big. Like, especially if you're down to like, hey, I just need to draw a couple of creatures because they don't have anything. Um, and this is this is like a sub one minute card, but I think it's still pretty strong. Reminds me of a baby living dead. Like, it could swing a game, but I feel like when you're spending eight mana to do that, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. Because the enemy's not losing anything, and they're still going to be able to play the board. You're going to be down to two mana on a good day. Yeah, 
And Glass and is now about actually has a, a, a throwback comment that says, if Amatsu overflows, Ketchawasha is going to become way more dangerous. And that's true. That's I didn't think true. about that. Yeah, I did not think <laughs> that about that at all. That is a strict synergy that we, we didn't really mention, so that's a good look. I don't know, but you never do until you do, I guess. What do you think about 8-drop for everybody shuffling their deck there, Iowa? <clears throat> I like it because, you know, I, I've been looking for a board wipe for, for this game for a while. I think it's really good on response, and, you know, like Zenrado says, if, even if you play this, your opponent, if they charge a bunch of mana, they're still going to be able to get ahead in the game. But ideally, you want to use this kind of like an emergency button for really bad situations that you cannot come out from unless you have this card. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that purple will get maybe some type of um, when this card leaves the field type of abilities, and then this card would be better. That would... I don't know if they can actually do that in design and tap in, because then that becomes a very strong ability very quickly without a lot of oversight. Mm -hmm. um, all right, what do we got? The Outriders. We've got V's uh, Bird and Kitty. Uh, four drop, epic action. Returns an enemy a unit with two attack or less to their EX pocket. If friendly units have leveled up five times or more, returns any single enemy unit to the EX pocket instead. It's a bounce in purple. It's fine. I don't... Like, for four, I think it's... I don't know how often you're going to be able to pull off its <coughs> big one, but, like, it gets rid of a tyrant. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that I would play it over Demonic Intimidation unless I was really going in hard on growth, which, as we've said a million times, we don't know if that's going to be viable or not necessarily yet. So Glasses uh. is saying, what if Soul's Return affects the graveyard? I think... I don't think it does. Um, and I, I can, I'm absolutely willing to be wrong on that one because it says returns all units to their respective decks, and that would assume units are in play. Um, but yeah, that I, is a very it, vague wording, so you could be wrong. Yeah, that would change. You that could play with the wording strange. so hard. You could oh, play yeah. with the wording so hard on that it ends up applying to the hand also. Yeah, so I. It, yeah. It's hard to tell with the wording. My assumption is the same as yours that it will only apply to yeah, the. I assume people, it's. But. I assume it's like a a board balance. I assume it's like a. Uh, it just everything goes to hand. That's a creature, so we'll see. Uh, Killer B, we're finally getting to black. This one's pretty good, right? Yeah, it's all right. You play it against... It the... feels like they, they're trying to throw us a bone with, like, we know you don't like Forgan. We know. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, she's a... Cammy is a 5-drop, five 5-3. Five uh, victory destroys an enemy unit with an MP cost of 4 or less. <coughs> you, play, you throw it against something lower than 4. A 5 attack is probably going to kill it. You beat the creature, you blow up another card. That's that's fine. Like yeah, you it's a, a reactionary you, card, but that reactionary a, cards are good. Yeah, so. if you get a two for out of it, it does exactly what it's meant to. I don't think it's like strictly insane. All right, that's fine. Iowa, no worries. Iowa's got to drop. We have taken too long. That's <laughs> okay. But thank you guys for having me. Appreciate yeah, no you worries, guys. man. Thanks for showing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Good times. Yeah. All right, be careful. All right, so we'll uh, we'll get through. Drive this safe. Yeah, drive <laughs> safe. Um, I like this card a lot. So double is a five drop one ten, uh, MP boost twenty, growth five. So yeah, I like him. Um, it, it's interesting that he loses his MP boost. Well, because so, like by the time you hit growth five, maybe he doesn't need it. Like he's a three exactly at that point, right. And I mean twenty is not a ton. Twenty is what the same as a kitty. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. So it's not I, I, it's not something where you're going to drop him and, oh, shit, he's Iris, and he's even better. So it's like they're toying around with the black having consequences, you know, the whole high risk, high reward, but actually it's all reward. Yeah. Um, I mean, black it looks like they're toying with that with this, and I don't know what the outcome of that's going to be. But I like the card. I like the characters a lot. So, like, I, I think this is fair. Like, well, I think this is their first sort of dabble in let's make black what it's supposed to do. Um, but we'll figure it out. Uh, next is Delamador. This is your boy. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Seven drop. He's not great. Kind of sucks, but this dude is gonna be such fat memes. One twenty. So it means he's gotta stay on the fucking board until you play twenty mono worth of creatures. Twenty MP. Excuse me. Don't hate. Me. Unless you're playing Nero. Yeah. So uh, level two, he destroys all enemy units. He's a one-sided board wipe. Like that's pretty good. Yeah, he, he's going to be big memes, but it's going to be funny when it works. So, uh, I don't know. Like, 
There, there are ways you could sort of cheese him around. I don't necessarily think he's going to be amazing, but I don't think he's going to be awful either. Like, seven is just such a... That's such an expensive cost to not immediately get something out of it other than... To need 20 more mana to... Yeah, like, this guy's got... Value. Like, yeah. you drop him off the rip, and you're still probably not going to get there. Yeah, probably. So, he's he's cute. I'm sure people will figure something out. Uh, <laughs> Black Legendary, Tainted King, Vale, Hazak. Seven drop, zero ten. When he's placed on the field, he gains one attack for every unit in both players' graveyards. I feel like this may end up being an Uroboros target, right? Um, well, I don't know if... Does Uroboros count as placing on the field? Yeah? Because I, to my understanding, Uroboros summons do not count oh, as growth. Oh, yeah, no, they don't, so... Hmm. So I, I don't know, but but growth is also MP based. So I I don't know. It's I'm not 100 percent sure how. Well, no, I guess it do, it would work because it works for um, basil guys. Oh yeah, I mean it works for the old M Bison build too. So yeah. I yeah. Guess, so yeah, it would work. I guess this is fine. Like seven. Seven mana, mana though. You're wouldn't he uh, get overridden by Mr X? Is it Mr X eight? No, Mr X is six. Which only, is I thought only the. The crappy form was six. I thought the buff form was more mana. Uh oh, that's a good point. I don't know what his flip is. I think it might be eight. Could be wrong. So no, I think that's fair. I think the card I think it has potential. I think as a legendary, it might as a one of, I don't think it does enough on its own. Yeah. Um pretty badass. It's a real game. late game. Yeah. When you can't really play him in a super revenge heavy deck because he's not getting his stats, so yeah, so uh, Desperate Act 1. Uh, here, This is where things get weird. Uh, gives 6 growth points to a friendly unit with growth. Also grants that unit destroyed after attacking once. So, like, you, you just play it right as you're going to get a Delometer off, right? Yeah, I guess. Because like, Delometer ain't doing anything yeah, in his own lane. Like unless you're buffing the crap out of him. So yeah, so it does your... what it's supposed to do, and then it gets the fuck out. So, I, I guess. That's... Fine. Yeah, I yeah, it's fine. I, I don't think it's great. I think it's gonna be kind of a gimmick card, but yeah, I'm not not really sure how to feel about it. Uh, Forbidden fruit, legendary, three drop action gives a friendly unit three attack and damage taken by this unit is taken by your hero instead up to three times. I guess this could be good. Maybe. Uh... It it seems like a neat gimmick with something like uh, Killer B, yeah. where all of a sudden she's just popping units left and right. But like that's such a that's eight mana though, or eight MP. That's a lot. It, it, the problem here too is that like Black doesn't have anything like Devil Trigger, obviously. Yeah. So this so would be kind of a no cool meme play with a black purple Devil Trigger though. Yeah. Um. And also, this doesn't count as sacrificed HP for something like Nergigatse. This is just getting hit. Yeah, so like for Black so. Purple Rezo, I guess, or Black Purple Devil Trigger, fine. Uh, that's really the only way I could see this getting played, unless there's something else in this deck and this in the reveals that are just like, you were wrong, and it may be the case. Yeah, and like uh, you said, we say that every time. But yeah, and I, I hate it's hard to rest on that, but we'll find out tomorrow, I guess. So yeah. that is all of the card balance. Um so I guess, um, honestly, we've run about an hour, so we can cut this one and then we can have a state of the game with Iowa one, like probably later on in the week. Um, that sounds good to me. Yeah, just because I think we've run. It'll be good week. to talk about post-release. Yeah, especially because we can have sort of reactions versus, because um, I definitely do want to have a state of the game talk because there are a lot of issues in the game that I think need to be uh, aired. And I'm sure people are doing it, like even Stout. And Time Rocker have sort of had their, you know, hey, we're talking about this regardless of whether or not people like it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the game obviously could be improved, but I think there's, you know, find me one that can't. I think it's still a good game for, for what it is. Yeah. I as long so, as they yeah. keep trending in the right direction, I'm so, content, but there's uh, definitely some problems. We'll get back with Iowa. Uh, we'll give you a state of the game. Oh, what does Glasses got? I feel like Vale is going to be more mid game than late, especially Neuro. Black has no trouble destroying five units. Yeah, I mean,. I guess that's fine. The problem is just what you're destroying. Because if you destroy something and you proc your revenge, it does not go to your graveyard. So Vol doesn't get it. Well, and here's the So you're going to have to be like... playing more things that aren't going to come back later just to get a buff on Vol. So he mentions G Adult. So do the mini parasites go to your graveyard? I think so. I mean, I have 
didn't think about that. That's a strictly more defensive option. Yeah. It, yeah, it's. I didn't really think about that either. I guess you could do something like that. It's again, it's it's deviating a lot from how Black plays because Black might drop one of those, or you know, I've I've never seen more than two in a game um, compared to a more. But maybe with the nerfs to revenge, maybe it will shift more in that direction. Yeah, maybe that's a good point, glasses. You got a. Uh, we should uh, we should get you in here too. You got some hot fucking takes, buddy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we'll cut it for here, um, just because I don't think going on without Iowa, um, because we did want to talk a little bit about the tournament we're sc- we're sort of getting involved in. Uh, Iowa's planning it, so we'll talk more about that later, and we'll have kind of a, a reaction and a talk about um, where the game is now, um, things that could be improved, uh, e- economy stuff like that. So uh, you got anything else in? You got anything going on? You want to yell at people about? No, no, I think we're good. Come watch me open packs tomorrow night on yeah, stream. Yeah, I think we're all going to be doing it. Uh, and then you Pretty can, much. Or, and then someday we'll stream King of Fighters, I guess. I just don't know if it's very streamable. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's hard. I don't know how much content is going to be easy to make out of that. No, yeah, well, they don't. It, doesn't seem, it seems like they cycle stuff pretty quickly. It's just not a crazy game to watch, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, it's all pretty, right, boys it's and girls, uh, this has been Fort Misery Gaming. Uh, if you are liking the Teppan stuff, leave us some comments. Talk about it. Share it with your friends. Tell your mother. Um, I'm sure she's a lovely lady, but I would really like her to like me more than you. Um, come see us. Uh, Scuba's back with Aloon next week. He just got married, so congrats to him. So he's on honeymoon uh, in Cancun. So, you know, he's having a better time than pretty much all of us. So, yeah, uh, probably. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, you know what? I'm willing to just throw that out there. He's probably having a better time than all. I'll give him a 60-40. He's probably yeah, got a shot. I, I think odds are with him. Uh, so, all right. You guys have a good night. And uh, obviously, like it, comment on it, subscribe. Uh, check out Zenroto either on Twitch or YouTube. Uh, I'll make sure to put his uh, info and Iowa's infos in the links. So, uh, yeah, get at us. Let's uh, let's talk some more tapping. Good night, boys. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>